Hi, here we go. Start of part four. Hi, John. What did you work on on the carburetor side of things? The stupid metal bracket. The stupid metal bracket. So, John fabricated his own choke mount bracket himself because we wanted to prove that the printout works perfectly fine and that even a 10-year-old can manage to make the bracket. And then, what did I do with the hood? So this was the original mount piece for the hood to be able to keep it still and stuff and not have it break. So, uh, Dad 3D printed a different one so we could uh, have the uh, hood opening feature. Alright, so this is so we can make the flip up hood that looks like a school bus, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I quickly threw this together in a 3D print, and I could have done the same thing using a really large washer, but what I wanted was I wanted this one inch channel piece right here so that I can just take a piece of one inch bracket or something or a hinge or anything and just bolt it up in order to make this pivot point. It's just easier to work with and it cut down on the distance that it was sticking in. Now, We've got the engine sitting way lower than it was in the previous video ending. And the reason being is because we need this down lower in order to clear the hood and the front. We have hit an unfortunate circumstance that we were trying to avoid. Because of using this CVT system, we need to be able to remove this in order to be able to change this belt. And that means we're going to have to cut out an access panel into here that we were hoping to avoid, but unfortunately it just is what it is. We've also marked out down in here where we're going to put a cross member in, probably remove the temporary one that we welded in previously. In a perfect scenario, we would like to get this in so that we could have an adjuster here, but... If we don't manage to get that in, we can build our own adjuster. Or we might cut these tabs off and then weld this up to here and make the adjuster a little shorter. Also, John, do you want to show them the debacle of the seat? Mm -hmm. So this seat here is the seat that I originally purchased for this project. So we'll show you what it looks like here if I come up and above. So I'll pull this out. Because Vevor got a hold of us and offered to sponsor a seat for the build. Which is good, because the seat is too small for me. It's just so heavy. Oh, it's heavy? It, maybe you need to just eat your Wheaties. Did you figure out what Wheaties were yet? No. John doesn't know what Wheaties are. I think I failed as a parent. What are, what are you doing? Do I have to open the door for you? Oh. What are what are you, a lady? I have to open the door for you now? <laughs> Come on, get it up in there. You can do it. Oh, we've also got adjustable brackets in here right now that we bought off surpluscenter.com just for spacing. So, yep, there we go. So this we can roll back because this seat's going to end up back in there anyway. So we close the door. So Vevor sent us this seat, which is too small for me, but fits John really nicely as I trip over the other seat. So we're debating whether we should use that seat or something else. But for now, let's see if we can work on the idea of throwing this engine into here and getting a jack shaft welded in. Alright, so John is finishing up grinding off the last piece to weld in. We decided we wanted the engine and the transmission just as low as we possibly could with the engine mounted in line with the frame rail. So I notched out the frame welded in a piece here. I shouldn't have cut out this hole here just yet because I actually need to cut it a little further over, but it is what it is. John's got the last piece that he did some thumping on in order to bend into shape, and where does that piece go? 
Uh, it goes this way, right? Yep, it goes in there. It'll end up going in underneath everything. No, you got it backwards. Good try. So that's going to go like that. And that'll give us something that we can eventually weld a piece on the bottom of to reinforce. So this will be where the end of the engine is and the transmission will sit right in here. And having this cut out should allow us to be able to have the pivot for adjusting the transmission. You have the face of a man who walked around and forgot why in the world he was walking around. What do you have in your hand? A plate piece for, a, for the exhaust. An exhaust flange? Oh. Okay, so why do you have an exhaust flange? I mean, I'm supposed to be finding a pipe. Yes, you're supposed to be finding a pipe with a bend in it for us to make a temporary exhaust. Good job! Boy, I tell you, it's hard to find good help these days. All right, we've got this sitting on here. In a strange turn of events, if you notice, there's quite a bit of spacing there. And what I didn't think about was that we need the pivot here, but the stock frame actually mounts in right here where that circle piece is. So when we put in these frame rails, they're actually about a half of an inch too high. So what I'm going to have to do is cut them off behind where the bumper mounts and then come out of the bottom inch or so and then make the pivot area. Because as it is right now, they sit just a little bit into this. But we're getting there. On the other hand, as far as the engine goes, sorry for the horrible camera angle, but if we click on a flashlight in here, we're clearing, whoop, let me get my hand out of the way. We're clearing that by about an inch. We have a ton of upper clearance there, which means mounting the gas tank up in here or over in there should be relatively easy to do. We've got our gearbox all nicely slotted in here. I'm going to take this and cut it off and angle it for our finished welding of doing this. And that should get us to the point of being able to flip this thing over and figure out the jack shaft. Hi John, what are you working on? Exhaust piece. An exhaust piece? So we found a Briggs & Stratton single cylinder exhaust piece in order to drop down. If you bore out just a little bit, they fit. So John's trying to cut it off so we can clock it at a different angle. And I came over here to bug him because I got to cut off some pieces. Okay. Gonna have to expand the shop soon so you have your own cutoff saw. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, John. So what are you working on? Exhaust Okay, where is that gonna go? Right here. There we go. So that's gonna be the turn down. And I wanted to show you guys this. I got tape on this, and I'm going to put tape on this right here, because if you're just using a cheap Chinesium buzz box like this, it splatters all over the place. If you take five seconds to put some tape on your thread, you don't end up with splatter messing up everything. Alright, you want to go play on your trampoline? Sweet. Okay. <laughs> the snow is finally melting on it. <laughs> yes, the snow's finally going away. Getting way closer to putting that jack shaft in. We got John's project here all welded together. So this is going off into this direction. Yes, we do need to turn it down and out eventually. We'll put a hot dog muffler on it like we have in the past. And probably paint it red like we usually do. As it is now, I've got to unbolt all of this, except for the transmission, get it pulled off, pull the body off, flip the whole thing, and we'll start working on the jack shaft.
Let's see if we can make some sense of the current upside down situation. All right, so we're gonna take this bar, we're gonna weld this bar in right about here, and that's gonna let us have our jack shaft here that goes to our transmission. Now, in a perfect world, we would have the jack shaft exactly in the center of this frame. It would be way better because as it is right now, we've got a kitty wampus into the rear differential setup. In a perfect world. But this isn't a perfect world. The problem that we're running into is these transmissions were designed to drop straight down. They weren't designed to come in underneath the engine. So the gear and the mount actually lines up with the side of the engine plate mount. So we can only bring this over just so far at this point. On a good note, this is just a little bit smaller than a three quarter inch shaft and it's splined. So we should be able to just slice some splines into this and stuff this on here and go with that. On the other end over here, can you tell which one of us ended up putting anti-seize on this rusted part? I'll give you one hint. He didn't pay for it either. All right, so here's our hub that we ended up cutting out of the pulley that originally went on here. We've got a really large connection here on this Jeep Wrangler steering shaft. It is just about the same size as that. It's just a little bit smaller in here than it is this circle right here. And it is big enough that the bolt that goes there, I'm sorry, the nut that goes there should be able to fit inside of the entire thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a grinder, we're going to cut this down, stuff it on there, stuff that over the top of it, and we should have a drive shaft. All right, now just to do all of that and put my money where my mouth is. Recording. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, but this is the way I chose to make my rear hub. Getting closer. Alright, keeping in mind that it's currently upside down, John's gonna show you how this works. So the engine would be right here, and it would power the torque converter in this direction down into this torque converter. So go ahead and spin that, John. So that spins the gear that comes out of this forward neutral reverse gearbox which goes to the jack shaft that has the extremely professionally cut splines on it. And it comes down through the Wrangler steering shaft, goes to the hub that yet again we did very nicely with a grinder and a drill press. That goes into this and that turns the axles. Now, Right now, we're not sure we got it going and spinning the right direction. We'll figure that out at the first test hit. Okay, right now that's still moving. We gotta try and get it idle down and see if it'll let go. Alright, so this is still too tight, but go ahead and try and shift it in.
Well, John, what's your two cents? It vibrates a lot, and it vibrated so much. For, this is really loose, and that's about to fall off. Oh, the bracket for the shifter fell off? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was even actually bolted on. I think it was just kind of half whatever. All right, so what should they expect us to be doing in the next video? I don't know. You don't know? Well, what do you think it needs next? Steering? Steering would probably be a good idea. Probably, most likely, the next video is going to be us attempting to figure out a way to mount a Craftsman axle on here. The reason being is because the Craftsman first and second generation, the steering rod for those goes underneath right here in a Craftsman lawn tractor. So, in theory, we should be able to mount the steering box about here in the cab. The arm will go down, and it'll come forward in order to do the steering in the front. At least that's the theory. We'll bring you back. Did you find it yet? It's stuck in the crack. It's stuck in the crack? Yeah. Oh, I got it. That, that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs>